Hello, my name is Marie Toole and I am an AARP Colorado volunteer. AARP can see and feel the trends. People 50 and older are more active, both physically and mentally, than ever before. They aren't slowing down. In fact, they're preparing themselves to do more of the things they love. So many older adults are exercising and eating right daily. They are taking the time to learn new things and they know the importance of life balance making sure that leisure and fun are significant parts of their healthy lifestyle. As part of that get up and go attitude, we're hosting webinars like Let's Tra Chat Nutrition with culinary nutritionist, Michelle Fox, where we can discover ways to keep our nutrition in check so that as we age, we can continue to do the things we love to do without limitations. In tonight's episode, Meal Planning in 30 Minutes, Michelle will share secrets to crafting a personalized meal plan that fits your lifestyle perfectly and to getting it done in under 30 minutes a week. She'll have a Q&A period after the presentation. In that spirit, we welcome you to enjoy our Let's Chat Nutrition webinar. If you need captions, please note that you can start them yourself if you go to the more section located in the Zoom toolbar at the bottom and click on captions. Also, we'll be sending the handouts from tonight in an email to all participants along with a recording link. In that spirit, well, we hope you learned something new tonight and helpful. We want you to, you to enjoy yourself, relax, and most importantly, have some fun. If you'd like to hear more about healthy living and nutrition, please check out our website, www.aarp.org slash food slash healthy eating. We look forward to connecting with you. And here is Michelle Fox. Thank you, Marie. I always love to see you on these webinars. It makes my heart happy. And thank you community for showing up tonight. Oh my goodness. We had quite a few registered and it looks like the chat box is already being lit up. And so I encourage you, if you have not yet told us where you are streaming in from and one thing you're grateful for, I would love for you to hop in the chat box. It looks like Francis is here from Nebraska. Francis, welcome. Michelle here from Pennsylvania. So, oh, Jacksonville, Florida for Sheila. Welcome, welcome. So we've got people on the East Coast. So I know it's getting kind of late there. So I promise you, I will make this worth your while. Let's see. I'm going to read a few more and then we'll jump right in. Um, oh, Bev from Boulder. Hi. You know, I always love to see your name pop up in the chat box. So glad you're here. Uh, Linda says she is from Central Texas and she is grateful for AARP events. Amen. Me too. Uh, Wendy's from Colorado. Welcome, Wendy. And then I'll read one more. Let's see. Loretta in Maryland. Well, welcome, all of you. I am so sincerely grateful and happy and glad that you are here. I want to encourage you to keep that chat box going. I want to, what's the word, endear a sense of community tonight because we are all in this together. So yes, we are going to be talking about meal planning and it will get a bit technical. You have my word there. But also, especially if you've known me from before, you know I always have to bring the fun. And when we get technical, I believe that bringing the fun helps the information land in our brains a lot easier, and it helps to motivate us to, to stay consistent. So that little stutter I did, <laughs> that also reminded me. In the chat box, we are all about community here. So you can see, I get very excited when we start talking about nutrition and planning and food. And so if you do find that I'm talking too fast or you miss something, feel free to put your question in the chat box. And then you, fellow community member, if you see a question that you can answer, please jump in and help us all out because I am going to do my best to get through the presentation. And then at the very end, I will save 15 minutes for Q&A. And at that point, you will be invited to unmute yourself and we can talk voice to voice. I'll take the presentation down. So I'll be able to see your faces if you choose. Um, and so I have a timer here and then I've got a wall clock over there. So you have my word. I will absolutely protect those last 15 minutes for us to connect. So 
keep being an amazing community and help each other out. All right. So tonight, my workshop promise number one for you is you are going to learn how to create more time. My workshop of promise number two, you are going to learn how to save more money. If you know how to use the emojis in the chat box, can I see some emojis for money and or joy? Um, and or maybe you can share with me an emoji of the way you might be feeling right now as we're jumping into this. Let's see. I love it. Oh, and Darkus asks if they can print out the meal planner and save it and print it. Absolutely. If we haven't included it in the chat yet, um, we will add that. And then I will also give you some options if you aren't able to print out the meal planner. So no worries. Nobody gets left behind tonight. I will hold your hand the whole way. Oh, and I'm loving all these claps and the smiley faces and the hearts. Ah, oh, you guys rock. I'm so happy you're here. Okay, great. Workshop promise number three. You will learn, and if you see my face look this way, it's because I have a second screen here. So you still have 100% of my attention, but you will learn to eliminate the what's for dinner question. That was my best interpretation of a teenager. I've got three teenagers in my house and thank goodness because I meal plan. I don't hear that often. I, I've trained them over the years, but you know, every so often, especially if I get behind, which, you know, I'm human. I do get behind sometimes. Um, I do get that what's for dinner. So I'm going to help you hopefully eliminate that from your house as well. And then last but not least, my workshop promise number four is we are going to have some fun. So who is with me? Let's keep practicing with those emojis. So my friends who might be new to the emoji function in the chat box, if you look at the very bottom ribbon, you'll see a little happy face and you click that and you can play with all the emojis you want. <laughs> but don't get too carried away. I definitely want you to stick with me with the meal planner. So yay, Gina found the money emoji. Woo -woo. Here's my best version of the money dance. Okay, let's learn how to save more of that so that we can enjoy our meal planning and enjoy our lives doing other things outside of the kitchen. So this is just another friendly reminder to stay with me tonight, stay engaged. Again, I encourage you to keep the chat box lit up when it's appropriate and, and when you can participate. But if you can, I would love for you to grab your water. I've got my water here. Get in your comfy seat. If you happen to be in a uh, louder area, perhaps you might want to close the door so you can really focus in tonight because I'm telling you, I am going to make this worth your while. So this information stays with you because once I teach it to you, you can't unlearn it. Nobody can take it away. So you owe this to yourself to stick with me. While I'm holding this water, I'm going to have some. Pardon me. All right, so let's dig in. Also, this is just a reminder that I will promise to save the last 15 minutes for the big questions. So if they pop up and you want me to answer them, just write them down to the side so you'll remember. But if there's something that you believe somebody else in the community can answer, again, pop that in the chat and we will all help each other out. So, you are in the right place if you want more time outside of the kitchen. You're also in the right place if you are frustrated with your current dinner routine. You're in the right place, my friend, if you struggle with consistency when it comes to cooking healthy food. And then of course, you're in the right place if you are ready to learn a new way. Whatever your motivation, I fully support you. Like I said, we are in this together tonight. So as Marie already introduced, I am Michelle. And so you may know me as a culinary nutritionist and a health coach, but there are two other titles that I would be, I would feel amiss or remiss. I always get those two mixed up if I didn't mention, which is mom and wife. And so as you can see, we are a blended family. That's hubby Steve and his two kiddos and my daughter. And then yes, of course, I am a dog mom too. That is Chloe dog. 
if you've come to any of our cooking workshops, I'm sure you've seen her cameos going in and out of the kitchen behind me. <laughs> and so Chloe is my buddy. Also, just so you know who I am, if we haven't met yet, uh, I'll go through this super quickly, but I got my applied um, or my degree in applied psychology from NYU. And I followed that up with a study in Belize where I worked with a shaman and I actually learned how to talk to plants and I learned plant medicine in that experience. A few years later, I did graduate from the Interconnection Institute and got my certification in meditation. And then most recently, I got my certificate from the Academy of Culinary Nutrition. So what if I told you that by committing to 30 minutes a week, and that's it, just 30 minutes a week of meal planning could actually save you up to six hours for other activities outside of cooking or grocery shopping, and that making small changes can increase your energy and help to decrease your anxiety. It is true. And I'm guessing you already knew that. And so let's get into that nitty gritty to make sure this lands for you so that you can feel better both mentally and physically. All right. So next, I want to take a quiz. I want to see who's in the room and what we've got going on. So let me come on over here and find our poll which, you know, I don't see on here. So Michelle, if you yeah. give me one minute, I will get it on there. Just give me oh, one okay. second. Okay. Oh, and no worries. Cause we can do this in the chat box as well. No worries. It's we're, we're fine. So sorry the, about that. No worries at all. My fault. I probably should have double checked before we hit record. So again, it's community. We're all this together. <laughs> Thank you, though. So if you could put in the chat where you are when it comes to meal planning. So put in a number one if you are brand new. If you're like, meal planning, what's that? Put in a number two if you're like, oh, I do it once in a while, but I'm just not consistent. And number three, if you're like, I've got this down. I just came for the community tonight, Michelle. So let's see. We've got lots of twos. Okay. A one. Couple ones. Oh, good to know. Okay. Oh, yay. So we've got almost half and half ones and twos. I love it. Okay, then. Yes, you guys are absolutely in the right place. Okay. So at this point, you should have received a meal planner that looks like this in your email. If not, we will have it emailed to you with the replay of the show. And also, I know Allison put it in the chat so you can scroll all the way up and or we might be able to put it in the chat again here. Um, so hopefully you have that, but absolutely no worries if you don't, because the steps I'm going to walk you through, if you just have a blank piece of paper, that's going to work. And then also, I don't think Marie will mind me sharing. She has this awesome post-it note program that she uses. And I have a girlfriend who keeps all of her meals on post-it notes and she puts it on the fridge. And so I just mentioned that to say, whatever works for you is what's going to work for you. So I'm going to show you the way I do it. So take what works and then just leave the rest. So with that, grab your meal planner if you can. And oh, thank you, Allison. It looks like it is in the chat right now. So for my A-type friends, you can absolutely plan to do this every week and have it clean and clear and have instructions and have links to recipes that you found online. And if you do this, I will say, awesome. I will also show you the reality of, let me get this a little bit closer, of what mine looks like. You can see I've got the chicken scratches. I only have the dinner column filled in. And so I just want to show you the difference to say, I want you tonight to be able to commit to something. So whether you're doing the chicken scratches version or you're doing the typed version on the computer, I want you to listen to your intuition and let's just find something that works. So before we talk about the how, because I promise we're gonna do that together, at least begin the process, 
I want to start with the why. Like, why do we want a meal plan? Why did we sign up for this class? Let me count the ways. So when we meal plan, you will always have what you want available in your kitchen. I know for me, I get very frustrated if I start a recipe and it's like, oh, shoot, I forgot to get, you know, the the coconut yogurt. That's something that uh, is one of my staples. So that doesn't, that's not fair because I always have that. But you know what I mean? Or, oh, you know what it is? Actually, it's all coming back to me now. It's spices. Like sometimes when I get a little bit and I forget to put it on my list to get the next week, I get so frustrated with myself. So I'm like, that was a really simple fix. So I also offer that to let you know, I do keep my actual list on our family wall so that one, the family knows where to go. But then two, when things like that happen, like if I end up using all of the garlic powder, I immediately just write a little note on this, you know, on the wall, on this paper. So I know next week, grab the garlic powder. Okay, I got a little off track. Let's go back to counting the way so we can jump into the how. Um, so we want a meal plan because your snacks can be planned ahead of time. We want a meal plan because it calms our nervous system. How many times do you get to, you know, 4 p.m., 5 p.m., and you're like, oh, shoot, I forgot to pull out the chicken to defrost, or, oh, man, I don't know what to eat, or, you know, you're asking your partner, hey, what are you in the mood for? I don't know. What are you in the mood for? Like, that's just, that causes our um, nervous system to get a little out of whack and causes anxiety. So when you have the meal planner, that goes away. It also helps to prevent making those poor choices like that last minute fast food run because you're quote unquote starving. It's also my teenager voice. (laughs) You don't have to do that anymore because you're like, hey, I planned ahead. So I know what we're having for dinner and I could go on and on. I actually do have a few more things on here, but let me know. Am I missing anything like reasons why you know that you want to start meal planning? And as you're thinking and maybe typing, I'll also add, I think the big one for a lot of us is whether we're on a diet or we want to stay in a nutritional track, this meal plan helps us to stay focused and and not, you know, stray over into the store aisles that we know we don't belong in. Excuse me, Michelle. Yeah. Um, So we did have a question that... um... Somebody is looking for like, would this, does this help you to save money and, and, uh, time, space, all that good stuff. Can, or can we touch on that? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, that's part of the workshop, but I'm happy to pause here and just share that. Yeah. So the saving the money part happens because you'll know exactly what you want to buy at the store. I can tell you some of my family members, like they don't live here. They kind of tease me sometimes because I call my kitchen kind of a skeleton kitchen. Like I don't have a lot of extras. Like if it's not on my meal planner, I'm not buying it. And so I'm saving money that way. Cause it's not like, Oh, maybe I'll cook this or maybe I'll prepare that. It's like, no, I'm preparing what's on my meal planner. And so I'm not spending money on all the, you know, quote unquote extras. So that's how I save the money. As far as saving time, I do block off 30 minutes a week for me. It's on Wednesday mornings. And in a moment, we're going to talk about what works for you. Um, but I save those 30 minutes on Wednesday mornings, do this meal planner. And so that's why it saves the time because when I come home at night, let's say like a Tuesday night, I'm not spending all the time, like looking at the fridge. What do I have talking to my husband? What are you in the mood for? You know, all that extra time. I don't have to worry about that because I know what I'm preparing. Um, But yes, we are absolutely going to get a little bit more granular with that. So thank you so much for asking. Um, All right. I'm just going to check the chat box. I saw you all active over here, which is amazing. Let's see. Okay. So it looks like Susan has a meal planner app. Amazing. Love it. So it looks like you use that and lean on that. Wonderful. Um, And Marie says the planner helps her to use up the things in her freezer. Beautiful. Uh, Norma helps to keep you in line so you can lose that weight. Because again, you're not going to be putting the extra 
calories on the meal planner. Love it. Okay. Oh, you guys are amazing. Yes. Keep it going. Okay. This is wonderful. Okay. So now let's get into the fun part, which is the how. So this is a little sneak peek at what we are going to focus on in the next, as I look at the clock, the next under half an hour. So we are going to be looking at scheduling and protecting 30 minutes a week on your calendar that works with your schedule. We are going to then look at our big calendar items so that we know how to schedule our meals around that. And an example is perhaps if you are taking a child to a soccer game on a Tuesday night, let's say, then you're going to know, hey, well, maybe that's going to be a crock pot meal night or that's going to be a leftover meal night. But you'll know ahead of time when we get home from that soccer game, we have food because we planned for it. And then, of course, the end of this, we will plan and we are going to have some fun. My favorite part. Okay, so let's get to it. So when I say we are going to schedule and protect the 30 minutes each week, and I know some of you have heard this one before, but I want to know in the chat, which do you think is the most important, the scheduling of the 30 minutes or the protecting of the 30 minutes? And I'll give you a moment for this one. Norma says protecting. Mm-hmm. Lucy says protecting. Terry protecting. Okay, this community is way too smart. Yep, you got it. <laughs> I think you guys have heard me ask this question before, but either way, amazing. Yes, and both. So it's kind of a trick question. The scheduling is equally important to the protecting. As I kind of alluded to earlier, I am going to help you to schedule it tonight. We are going to do that tonight, but it's going to be up to you. I will be passing the baton. It'll be up to you to protect that time because I can't do that for you. Um, I will just say for me, back when I worked in corporate, I would always do Sunday mornings. And so I would sit at the kitchen table, I'm pointing to my kitchen over there, and kiddos, hubby, the dog, they all knew, do not talk to mom. These are her 30 minutes to meal plan. And they knew if meal planning doesn't get done, it's going to have a domino effect on everybody's life. So leave mom alone. And so I just offer that up as an example that when you and I, because we're going to do that in a moment, when you and I agree and decide on the time that works for you, I'm going to trust that you will let everybody around you, if you have people around you, you will let them know, uh uh-uh, no interruptions. We are getting this done. And it's just one time a week. Okay. So your turn. I'm going to play some kind of background music, but I want you to, whether you keep your calendar on your phone or if you have your laptop if you want to pull that out I know a lot of us still use the paper planners and that's great wherever you can kind of see your week and maybe you have it in your head maybe your your brain works um, better than mine I have way too much going on up here so I have to put all mine on my google calendar but I'm going to give you two minutes and I'm looking at the timer but just get quiet for a moment and think like what truly is a time that you can commit to? Like I said, when I was in corporate, it was Sunday mornings. Now that I'm an entrepreneur, I do Wednesday mornings. I know in a former workshop, one friend was like, I can only do it at night, Wednesdays at 8 PM. And I'm like, sweet, you put Wednesday at eight. And I want that on your calendar. I want it put as a recurring time, every time, the same time every week. And then come back, put it in the chat and let us know. So you have the extra level of accountability, extra level of accountability for when you are committed to plan. All right. Two minutes on the calendar.
okay, it sounds like I may have found the uh, the share my computer sound a little too late. I hope you guys weren't just listening to the birds chirping. <laughs> Hopefully, mo okay, moving forward. Hopefully I figured that part out. So I am loving this chat. One thing, of course, we are all grownups here. So no shame allowed. I am not going to get on my soapbox. However, I will strongly encourage, I've seen some very broad statements, I would strongly encourage to find an exact time, even if you are retired, even if you have a super flexible schedule, because when you tell your brain a time, we're more apt to stick to that time. So versus like, for me to say Wednesday morning versus 8.30 a.m. Wednesday morning, I know now because I've been doing it for a while. When 8.30 hit, I'm, hits, I'm like, oh, yes, okay, I know what I'm meant to do. So I would just encourage you to pick a time. But um, this is your world, and we're going to keep it moving. <laughs> but kudos to everybody that's popping this on. Because also, putting it in the chat box does give you that extra level of accountability. Because now, you know, I see you. And hopefully you can hear my voice at the time you've committed to say, okay, knock, knock, it's time. Let's do this. Okay, I am just double checking here. Oh, you guys are amazing. Okay. Oh, and Anita, thanks for bringing up the sales circulars. Cause I know um, it's kind of funny in the beginning of my relationship with my husband, that was the way he would always shop is he'd look at the sales circulars and then build his meals around that, which I think is brilliant for me. I, um, I, what's the word I'm kind of tripping over cause I don't want to be um, rude to my husband, especially since he's not here to defend himself. I will just say I'm I'm more of the creative one. And so I'm more of like, oh, I feel like making blah, blah, blah. And then I'll get the ingredients. So I also offer that up to say this, of course, has to work for you. So kudos, Anita, for bringing that into the picture. Thank you for that reminder. Okay, so next thing, which is fun, is go ahead and pull out your meal planner and or my friends who have an app on their phone, and or if you have a plain piece of paper. If you do have a plain piece of paper, I would just encourage you to have something where you can put Monday through Sunday. I have it on the far left. That's gonna make life a little bit easier. And then of course, space to put the week of. So now with this one, I want you to go back to your calendar and look at some, I'm calling it high stress and or extracurricular items that are coming up. And let's just use this coming week to practice with, whether you want to start tomorrow and move forward, or if you want to start fresh and like on this planner, it's Monday, if you want to start with next Monday, but like perhaps Tuesday night, maybe you have a concert that you're going to. And so maybe, you know, you're going to eat before or you're going to eat out that night. And so you can mark, you know, eating out. Or perhaps like for me, let's see what example I used here. Yes, <laughs> I kind of like to forget sometimes. I, I'm also in school right now and it's a little stressful. So this is my fun and my outlet. So thank you again for being here. Um, so I just put this example. Wednesday night, I meet with my school group. And so I know that's going to probably be a crock pot night and where we're going to eat leftovers. And so I like to put that on the left side, just so that when I am going through to fill in the rest of the meals, my brain remembers like, oh yeah, Wednesday, we're going to be gentle with ourselves and prepare way ahead because it's already going to be a little extra stress that night for me. So another two minutes on the clock. And I just want you, before we even jump into recipes and actual meals, which I promise we will get to that, um, two minutes, I want you to look at anything coming up in the next week that you believe you'll have to plan around. For my A plus students, of course, you're welcome to look at your full days if you like to plan out every single meal. I will say for me, I tend to focus on dinners because that tends to be the biggest meal here with the family. And after I cook dinners, I typically use those as leftovers for my lunch. So that's why I don't pay a lot of, of attention for me for breakfast and lunch, 
But for you, especially if you are on a meal plan or if your doctor or dietitian has put you on put you on one, please, I want you to also add items during the day that might be coming up that might need some extra care to plan around. All right, two more minutes. And now hopefully you can hear my little happy music in the background. <laughs> Okay. I'm not sure what was happening with that music, but um, I am absolutely loving this conversation in the chat. Thank you all for helping each other out. This is fantastic. This is exactly what I was hoping for, because uh, if you have access to the chat, please, you can learn from each other just as much as you can learn from me. So thank you so much for sharing. I saw a lot of references to voting next week. So yes, I love that. Thank you in advance for our volunteers in the room. That is amazing. Thank you. And also, of course, PSA, make sure to go vote. <laughs> um, fantastic. So yes, the only thing I wanted to highlight here is there are a few people who highlighted that they will be out of the house next week doing uh, things because we're humans with lives. Um, so again, I just want to reiterate plan around it. So now that you have your planner, you'll know whether that's going to be a leftover night or if you're going to eat out that night, of course. Um, well, <laughs> I'm pausing again. My brain got jammed a little bit because as a nutritionist, I do lean towards encouraging you to cook your own food because you'll know the ingredients that are in that food. However, I absolutely support you eating out, especially if you can make healthy choices as you eat out. So I definitely do not want to demonize that. So if you are planning to eat out, please put that on your planner so that you know that's one night you don't have to worry about cooking. Yeah. Okay. So now the fun part, and we've got about 10 minutes to get through this section, and then I will open it up for questions. Um, but we are going to actually do the planning piece now. So take out again, or you already have this out, have your meal planner. And the part that I meant to say take out is for fun. If you want to go grab a cookbook you haven't looked at in a while, or maybe you use it every day grab a cookbook. Maybe some of us have the cookbook hiding in the basement and we'll grab that later. Um, I can tell you, I pulled out my big binder. Oftentimes I'll find a recipe I love. And lately I've been doing better about just bookmarking it in my Chrome on my web or in my website browser. 
but sometimes I like to print them out and I just have a big old binder that I save them in here for some of my favorite, my family favorites. Um, last but not least, I always love to recommend what I call Dr. Google. That is the best, whether you're meal planning or not. If you have like extra, let's say carrots and onion sitting on your counter, you can like type in recipe, carrots, onion, and then Dr. Google will probably spit back tens, if not hundreds of thousands of recipes that you can use. And so I absolutely want to encourage you to lean on all the tools to fill in the dinner column. So that's where we're starting. So now that you know whether or not you're going to be home and whether or not you're going to even be in the mood to cook uh, on certain nights, let's start just filling in dinner knowing that this is just an exercise, I don't expect it to be filled out completely. Perhaps it will, but do your best to start filling out some of the dinner squares. And then we'll come back and talk about the rest. And this one, I'm only gonna do like three minutes just so that we can talk about how to fill in the rest of the columns. And I'm not gonna mess with this silly music anymore. So, <laughs> Maybe you want to play your own music in the background. All right, three minutes. Okay, nicely done. So this workshop is just a snapshot. Obviously, you've already reserved the time, wink, wink, on your calendar already. So this will be hopefully an amazing start for you to plan the rest of your week. I want to keep moving. But before I do, somebody said something in the chat that I'm scrolling that I wanted to address that I thought was amazing. Um, well, one, it looks like people are watching cooking shows on PBS. Absolutely love that. And okay, I apologize in advance. I can't find it. So I don't remember your name, but you said something about the meal prep taking longer than an hour. So one, kudos to you for actually doing the meal prep. And two, 
I will share in my world what works for me. Again, take what works, leave the rest. But for me, I typically do my meal planning from 8.30 to 9 a.m. on Wednesdays. I do my grocery shopping from 9 to, well, 11, depending on the day and the errands that come along with it. But the moment I get home, that's when I unpack. I My first vision was of the cauliflower and the plastic, which I mean, I promise I won't get on my soapbox, but that always just gets me so upset because I do not like plastic in the kitchen. If you've been with me, you've probably heard me say that about 10 times because plastic can often leak chemicals into our foods. And so I immediately take the plastic off of the cauliflower. I chop it into the size that I know I'm going to prepare it later in that week. I put it in a glass jar, put it in the fridge. And then some of my other veggies that need to be refrigerated, I prepare those. So whether that's, you know, chopping off the woody ends of the carrots, putting them in a bath of water in a glass jar, put those in the fridge. And I just prep those. And that does take half an hour to an hour, depending on the food that I get. But what I will say is that time I invest on that morning is so worth it because then when I'm coming to, let's say, Friday, and maybe I'm making a stir fry, I can easily just grab those veggies, throw it in. Um, if it's Saturday and I'm making, you know, a stew, those veggies are already chopped, washed, clean, prepped, and I can just throw it in. And so that's another area where I believe I'm saving a lot of time by doing that chopping work up front. And then when it's time to cook, it's go time. You just grab, I just grab and go, grab and go. So just wanted to offer that up. So thank you for sharing that about the meal prep. Okay, so now that we've started with the dinner column, we'll just wave our magic wand. That dinner column is all filled in for the week. That's when I go back and I look at, okay, so this recipe is asking for, you know, A to Z ingredients. I kind of have a mental note of what's in the kitchen. So I know what I have, but... If I don't, of course I double check, but I go through each recipe and I put what I need on the far right. And so I, you'll notice I blocked it in sections so that you can get all of the food around the same section in the store. That's another thing that's gonna save you time. So, you know, all the produce, bam, you go in there, grab what you need. All your items in the aisle area, the perimeter of the store, You'll go grab that, the meat, the frozen items, and of course, the other. In my household, other means Costco. I don't necessarily endorse them. It's AARP. Plus, I don't endorse uh, stores in general. So I always have to, you know, give the disclaimer, not endorsing Costco. I will just say for me and for our big household, <laughs> Costco saves us time and money. Um, so I put my Costco items under other so that I know that they're separated from the other items here. So you'll go through the recipes, put your ingredients that you want to shop for on the right column. And then that's when I go back in and I fill in any breakfast items, I typically have my staples. I really love to make smoothies in the morning and or uh, lately I've been on this coconut yogurt kick and putting in some delicious granola. So I make sure I have those staples. And then, like I said, I like nine times out of 10, I'm eating leftovers for lunch. Um, but then if I have an appointment or if I'm having a lunch meeting, then of course, I'm going to write that lunch meeting in the lunch column so that I know I don't have to worry about it. So I offer that up to you as well. Okay, so looking at the time, we are getting very close to Q&A. So a few hip tips I just wanted to give you before I open it up is keep it fun. Like I said at the top of the hour, when we're having fun with things that can kind of feel technical sometimes, I think the having fun piece helps it feel like something that we can be excited to look forward to. And that way, keep the consistency to make sure we look forward to and actually follow through on doing it every single week. So playing your favorite music helps. Perhaps you're sipping your favorite be beverage, tea, um, maybe some sparkling water to make it extra special and bubbly. Um, sit in your favorite chair. And then of course, 
do your best to say kind things to yourself and thank yourself for committing to you and to your health. Um, let's see. So last but not least, I definitely want you to double check your shopping list on the right column to make sure you have everything you need before you either head to the store or perhaps you like to use Instacart or some other kind of ordering um, app. I, I honestly, I haven't looked into many, but I know that that industry is growing. I personally like to go grocery shopping. I know not everybody does. So again, this is a great time to just pause and, and ask yourself like what works for you and your schedule and your budget. Um, and then of course, I always like to double check my list, um, excuse me, the actual recipes to make sure I truly have everything I need before I leave the house. So just to reiterate, we are going to schedule and protect the 30 minutes every week. We're gonna add those big calendar items that we need to plan ahead and plan around. And then we're gonna actually do the planning and have the fun. So tell me either in the chat or we're gonna talk face-to-face -face in a moment, how does it feel to know that you can have control over your nutrition through meal planning? Let's chat. So let me stop the share. And this is the time where I invite you to turn your camera on if you want to say hi. And I believe we're opening up the mic. So if you want to unmic, but before we do that, let me just double check the chat to see if there are any like burning questions in the chat and then we can go directly to face-to-face. -to -face. Let's see. So any secrets how to effectively freeze and unfreeze food? It can be tough to prepare for one. Yeah, thank you, Deborah. I can absolutely appreciate that. For me, I tend to look at this list before I go to bed, and then I pull the meat out of the freezer the night before, and I put it in the fridge. And that tends to help. Um, if And that's when I know that I'm working out of the house. If I know that I'm going to be home that day, then I typically pull out the meat in the morning and I let it sit on the counter and let it defrost that way. So hopefully now that you have your meal planner and you can look ahead, you can see what works. Like, oh, let me just eyeball this before I go to bed so I know if I need to grab anything. And or if you prefer the mornings, I'm going to eyeball this before I leave the house or before I start my day so I know what to pull out of the freezer. So awesome question. Let's see. And Linda's saying it's better to defrost your items in the fridge. Okay, got it. Um, somebody's saying not safe to defrost on the counter. So just so we're clear, I am absolutely clean in my kitchen. So I do put my meat on a plate so that there's no juices flowing anywhere. So yes, absolutely clean and, and clear with that. So thank you for the reminder. Um, Norma says um, she puts her meat in a bowl on the counter. Yeah, I absolutely love that idea. Okay, I saw somebody's hand raise. Let's see, it looks like, is it Shania Jones? Let me increase my screen so I can see you. Are you able to unmute yourself? No, okay. Allison, is there something we can click on our side so that we can hear Shania's voice? It looks like she's yes. ready to go. I love yep. it. <laughs> Give me one second here. Okay. And while I'm on here, um, I think I just, wait a minute. Yeah, you okay. got it. Thank you. you. Have permission now. But while I'm on here, there was a question about, um, let me find it. There was a lot of questions about David and vinegar. Um, that's not the one. Can you share sources for recipes and cooking for one? Absolutely. So for one, I did not mention these awesome cookbooks behind me. Um, 
So this will kind of partly answer the question. So as far as recipes that I love, um, especially for my female friends who may be in the perimenopause or menopausal uh, time in your life, this Keto Green 16 by Dr. Anna Kabeca has amazing recipes and an amazing resource. And if I'm answering that in the light of eating for one, then I would say you would just take these recipes and divide them by half. So for this book, I know she has it recipes for two. So I'd probably still do the recipes for two. And then you have leftovers, delicious, health supportive leftovers there for your lunches and even breakfast. I've been known to eat my dinner foods at breakfast time sometimes just to mix it up. Um, I really love this book, not your mother's slow cooker cookbook, because it's the slow cooker, which we get to use often on the busier days, but they're like fun, creative recipes. Um, and so this one I think is for meals for four. So I'd probably just split it in half. And then that way you've got appropriate leftovers, I will say. And then last but not least, my teacher, Megan Teltner at the Academy of Culinary Nutrition, she has this recipe called the Undiet Cookbook. She's a big stickler on not necessarily dieting, but absolutely putting healthy food in your body. And I think most of her recipes are recipes for two people. So again, either just cut it in half or make it for two, and then you can freeze the leftovers or have the leftovers for lunch. Um, Last but not least, I would just reiterate leaning heavily on Google because there's just thousands and thousands of amazing recipes there that we can use as resources. Michelle, can you do me a favor? And after we're done, can you just um, send me a quick email with the names of those books and the author? And I'll be happy to send that in our thank you follow up email. Um and then that way, because there was a couple of questions of like, who's the author? So we'll just make it easy and do it that way. I'd be happy to. Yeah, happy to spread the joy. And now did we lose our last speaker? No, I'm still to... here. <laughs> oh, yay. Okay, I'm ready for you. Um, I just wanted to... um give a little input on what has worked for me. I've tried the meal planning before. I had a family of five. My girls are all grown now and I have, I'm now by myself and I do not know how to cook for one and it, you know, gets expensive. So I have still been, I still make my full meals just like I've always done, but I have found different unique ways to be able to freeze it so that I still have a, I'm not having to eat the leftovers all week and you get sick and tired of it, but you put it in the freezer. But for stuff like beans and rice or for gumbo, I'm from the South, sorry, South Louisiana. Love it. Um, you know, etchy face, anything that is like liquidy. I am obsessed with vacuum sealing everything that goes in the freezer. So the trick for that is, though, when you have stuff that is very juicy, I'm going to say, or, you know, spaghetti, stuff like that, you can't just vacuum seal very easily. Yeah. You put it in a container, whether it's a family size container or an individual container, and you put that in the freezer and you freeze it. And the next day you take it out. It's in the container. It's already in a, a set space, you know, for frozen. Then you vacuum seal it. And then all you have to do is cut a little slit in the vacuum vacuum seal bag, especially if you do individual um, meals. You cut a little slit in the vacuum seal bag, pop it in the microwave, and then you've got a meal. And it makes it easier to vacuum seal something to preserve it longer by putting it in a little container and freezing it in the container, anything juicy, and then vacuum sealing it. Works beautifully. That is brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, including that saves time down the road, because then you're only cooking yeah. perhaps two to three times a week. And then you have food for the rest of the week, if not the rest of the month, it sounds like with your style. <laughs> right. Well, Amazing. see what I do is on Sundays, when I get home from church, I like to come home and I will cook three to four meals all at one time. Like I'll put one in the crock pot. I will put cook one on top of the stove. I will put one in the stove and I might even have something in the air fryer. And that way it takes me about an hour. I've got meals for two weeks. 
once it cools, I package it, I vacuum seal it, and then I've got individual meals. So I have something to take for, I work at a high school, so I I can just pop it in the microwave there. If I'm running late after basketball games, like because something is invariably going to come up that you don't expect, and you already have those meals, and all you do is pop them in the microwave. And like I said, you can fix them family size or individual size when your child comes home hungry from school and just wants a snack or whatever before dinner, there's something that they can just throw in the microwave. So it makes it great, especially on, like I said, Sunday afternoons when I can I make three to four meals at one time and it gives me my food for the week. And it still only takes an hour because everything is cooking at the same time. So it doesn't take that long to try to do it. And then it of course takes me 30, 45 minutes to, um, to separate it into individual meals and all of that kind of thing. But and then it's one load of dishes in the dishwasher and you're good to go. <laughs> so it just, it just helps a lot. It's little tricks I've learned along the way as well. I absolutely appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that, um, Darkest, you'll be next, but I just wanted to answer Deborah because that kind of leads into what, sh- um, did I pronounce your name correctly? Is it Shania? Shana. Shana. I apologize. Okay. Thank you, Shana. I appreciate your, your graciousness. Um, so Deborah is saying... Um, her question was how to freeze leftovers and then to defrost them effectively. So absolutely love that question. So Shana gave one example with the vacuum seal. I have not personally um, worked with that, but that sounds brilliant to me. So that's one option. Um, The way I typically freeze is I get glass containers and I find these glass containers, you know, from Costco, from Ace Hardware, from, um, arc the thrift store and so i would put my i do put my leftovers in the glass container making sure there's at least an inch from the top so it doesn't you know expand too far i put those in the freezer and then as far as defrosting them um very similar to pulling out the meat either the night before i'm putting it in the fridge or i take it out in the morning and just put it on the counter on a plate so that of course our counters stay clean and I keep, I go from there. So I hope that helps, but if not, feel free to raise your hand and, and I'm happy to call on you next. So, all right, Darkus, did you have a question for us? Yes, is it is that all right to get the recipe from bags or boxes? You know, cause I get back, back in the bag, the back, cause I cook macaroni and cheese from the box. I don't do um, from scratch cause I don't know how. So I do bag or boxes or cans. I, I can cook cake. And that's our recipe when I cook a cake or muffins. Um, and I get it off the back of the package or the box. Is that okay? So, well, as a nutritionist, I will say my alarm bells are going off. But I also say that gently because I know that I honestly, I want to meet everybody where they are. And if that's what works for you, then of course, that's what works for you. This is also an awesome time to plug that here at AARP, I will be back next um, on the 7th. I'm looking at my wall calendar over here. So December the 7th, we'll be here making a delicious zucchini bread and also a berry crisp. And I'll talk about why I chose the ingredients that I chose. And I believe Allison either may have a link now or you'll receive one sooner than later through the the, the email system. So I'd email love for you to- Email is going to be so packed full. There's <laughs> going to be a recording, a meal planner, a list of books, and the link to register for next month's webinar. November 1? <laughs> November 1? I love it. So that'll be December 7th. Oh, and- December 7th? Okay. You got it. It's December 7th at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time. And so I just offer that up to say, come learn some cooking skills with us. But also what I loved in the chat box earlier, people were talking about how they love to watch cooking classes on PBS. And so perhaps you can learn um, some different healthy nutritional meals through PBS. I know on YouTube, there are some amazing cooking classes there. Um and that's free for all of us. And so, yes, yeah, so I will say, of course, if you are 
um, kind of newer to the kitchen or you just prefer cooking from a box? Yes, of course, do that. I want I want you being fed. But I'm have to challenge the, the the on TV and on it. You to some of them are challenging. They're too hard for me uh, to do. So I have to do something easy, you know. Yeah, I absolutely encourage you to not give up. Keep keep looking. But thank you yeah. so much for asking. All right, I'm going to move to the chat if I don't see any more hands. It looks like we're right at time, but I definitely want to make sure everybody got what they came for. Um, oh, uh, Dia recommended, or Dea recommended, um, maybe you could start with the children's cookbooks. I love that idea because, yes, those are some... Um, they, tim they typically keep, keep it simple and easy. I, oh, as you said, I love it. That's wonderful. Oh, you are welcome, Dave. Oh, I'm so glad, Ceylon. So great to have you here. Um, okay, so any other questions that you might want to put in the chat box before we go tonight? It truly is wonderful to see you all's faces and for everybody that's participated in the chat. Sincerely, I'm I'm so grateful. I, I love the sense of community that we've created here in this room and the sense of community that AARP Colorado has created. So thank you. Oh, um, you there was a question about the glass containers and glass lids. Everything's going so fast now, so I'm having a hard time getting back up there. And then I believe Deborah, she was the one she was um who was asking about the different ways to freeze. I feel like she is actually looking for meal prepping, like making a big dish and cutting it into smaller dishes, which that could be a whole nother episode. I agree. So, <laughs> I agree. So we may be to... coming soon, Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm writing down notes. Yes. Thank you for that. So then if that's the case, then yeah, that would be the meal prepping class. And tonight we did the meal planning class. Um, but just a 30,000 foot overview for meal prepping. Um, I love what Shana mentioned that, you know, after church on Sunday, she comes home and she knocks out a few meals at a time. And then that way she doesn't have to worry about it for the rest of the week. I love that idea. Um, for my friends who maybe want to break it down through the week, then of course, I also encourage still making those big meals when you are in the kitchen so that you can freeze it later. Um, and then lastly, that kind of combines the conversation about the glass containers. Um, Costco, and I, I imagine Sam's Club probably has it too, but Costco has amazing deals on glass containers. They typically have plastic lids. I haven't found uh, any workaround with the plastic lids, but it's okay because the food isn't actually touching the plastic lids. It's just in the glass, so it's safe that way. Um, but grab those freezer safe containers. You can get multiple ones and just stack them in your freezer. Um, and like I said, you can go to like ARC, other thrift stores, and they pretty much always have glass containers that you can purchase pretty inexpensively there. And that's a great way to store your food in the freezer. So like I said, I'm keeping it 30,000 square foot high, but um, I hope that helps a bit. Uh, oh, you are welcome, Lisa. So glad to have you here. Let's see. Anything else, Allison, that you want to mention? A whole lot of can you hear me? Because I, I started talking before, of course, I <laughs> took off the mute. Um, so Pam has an interesting, she says some, as Pamela says, some people use the food banks and it would be good to have a class on how to cook from the food bank. So maybe that, and you know what, maybe too, Michelle, we do a, like, you can show us on an eating for more energy, you can show us you cooking the meal and then how you break it up and the whole process like of a meal prep kind of situation. I don't know. I um, love that. And Chris just made a great comment too, that these are great ideas for cooking for someone who may have mild dementia to have it all planned out. I love that. Yes. Everything's right there. Written down, easy access. That is beautiful. Yeah. So and then, um, actually this you. last suggestion, sorry to interrupt, but I thought this is beautiful. Um, they suggested to look up snap diet 
slash recipes. Mm, I bet if you Googled a snap diet, I bet there's going to be a lot of resources on Google there Mm -hmm. as well. That's why this, these classes are the best because I just love how everybody just helps each other. (laughs) Thank you, everybody. (laughs) Yes. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. This has been amazing. And hopefully you'll be back with us in the kitchen, December 7th, 6.30 p.m. Mountain. I would love to cook with you. Awesome. Yep. And I will be sending all that information as soon as I can. Thank you, everybody, so much. And Michelle, is there anything else? I'm good. I can't say thank you enough. You guys have made this a wonderful evening for me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Good night. Good night.